I live in Plattsburgh, New York. I'm from Newburgh. I'm from Rochester, New York. I live in Brooklyn, New York City. I live in the Hudson Valley. I live in the Bronx. I'm from Buffalo, New York. I work in the Bronx. I work at uh, Plattsburgh State University in the dining hall as a cashier. As an administrator assistant. As a peer vacuum specialist. I'm finishing a Bachelor in Human Services. I'm the director. My husband and I and our business partner own a comic book store. I have a terrific job. I really like the job. It's a lot of fun. So I would go to work and somebody would say something and it would trigger something so I just like walk out. And I, I couldn't, I did not know anything about depression until I went back into the hospital this last time. Back about 10 years ago, I went through a two year depression which was unlike any others. It included cutting and, and about 20 ECT treatments. And it was actual two year depression. I was, couldn't get out of bed. And that, that was the lowest point for me. After several failed attempts at abstinence with drugs and alcohol, failed attempts after several hospitalizations, romantic relationship breakups, um, it was the loss of my children. When I lost my children, I really believed that they would be better off without me. And I tried to take my own life. I was in an abusive relationship and it was I think after I got out of the hospital and I realized like what am I doing you know, I'm supposed to be a feminist and here I am in this relationship and I've lied to everybody and I, at that point I just really completely lost hope because I had cut off ties with all the positive relationships in my life. I got in an argument with my mother she took my keys and I, I pushed her and I grabbed my keys out of her hand and I had cut her hand. Well, the cops came and I didn't leave yet. And as soon as they left, I, I said words to my mother that it really hurt. And while I woke up in jail and being told what I did to my mother, it, it was just unbelievable. Even when I felt better, when I got over that two year depression, it included like six hospitalizations. That was when I couldn't get a job. That's when they, they wouldn't take me back in the field uh, and I had the gap of employment. So that was the first time ever that, that I couldn't go back to work. That's when I felt like, oh, I'm never gonna get a job again. I'm gonna be unemployed the rest of my life. I was on disability for five years. And during that time, I had been in to 13 psychiatric hospitals. And in one hospital, they had a group. It was called Goals Group. So you went into the group, and you're supposed to write down your goals and how you're going to achieve it. And I had no goals. And my goal was to get a goal. And that, I felt very pathetic. The doctor said that I was allergic to the medication that the, doc the other doctor had me on. So she put that in my file. And um, after that, I was convinced I couldn't work. And I was convinced that I was just been through too much and I'll never work again. I got a letter or something about an advocacy and empowerment training. And um, so I went to it. And these two people were getting paid to teach us about empowerment and advocacy. And one of the people uh, doing it had his fly undone. And, <laughs> and um, I thought, my gosh, you know, they're getting paid to do this and his fly is down, you know? And um, I thought, if he can do that, I can do that. When I went through that really big depression, I was actually in bed for two years. Then when I, I, I started to get better, I started to go to support groups. And going to support groups, I saw I saw 
I saw other people with psychiatric disabilities that were working and were volunteering. And, and when I saw them, they were my role models. And even though I had been out of work for two months, uh, they, were, they were my inspiration to get me back. They really got my juices flowing into, into looking in, into work, into volunteering. So it was going to support groups and seeing, seeing other people that were very successful in working and volunteering. And it was going to support groups and seeing other people that got me motivated into trying to get back into either volunteering or working. It's, it is, it's the help that I get from my, from my groups, my therapeutic groups, and I can't do it alone. So I hope there's, like, there's somebody there that can help me, you know? So, but yeah, it takes a lot to regain hope, but I do it through therapy in my groups. Seeing other people with mental illness work and do what they want to do and get paid inspired me so much. I have a peer friend in particular who wrote my resume with me and has just been a constant support, encouragement, never judgmental, and always like is able to see the positive things in me. Um, it helps a lot with me with my perspective because I really lack perspective on my assets at times because everything's not about my psychiatric disability. But above all, to watch their success has, has just been incredible. To be at, with a friend at some of their lowest moments and then to share in their successes, um, to be able to go to that person and ask for advice. I needed a push start to get my wheels turning. I needed, a lot, I needed a lot of support from my caseworkers and they gave me a lot of support. Um, and they, they would take me around and I would fill out job applications in different places and um, I would go to the sites and, you know, um, I don't think I could have done that on my own. I needed someone to help push me a little bit. I used to live in supportive housing. So one of the case managers there recommend on me to go to the hard up setting for specific training. Since then, I haven't changed because I'm eager to learn, I'm eager to change, I'm eager to challenge for the future. I went from hospitalizations to, uh, to day treatment programs, to transitional employment, to, su to support employment services. I use them all. I, I uh, look out for, for mental health professionals who believe in you can work and then and support you. When I accomplish something, like it can be just like I went to school today and they say that they're proud of me. I, I love the, the way that it, I feel inside just from someone saying that. And so it keeps me wanna continue doing something in a positive way because they like what I'm doing. And that gives me hope just to have my mom proud of me. Korean phrase, if you know about yourself, you go for 100 battles, you're going to win all. If you don't know about yourself at all, you go to 100 battles, you go, you're going to be lose all battles. I went to my psychiatrist and said, will you declare me permanently disabled so I won't have to pay my student loan back? <laughs> and, and he said, why Marcy? I don't think you are permanently disabled. Mm -hmm. And I said, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that was the mentality. Like the mentality was entitlements, entitlements. And I had to change that mentality. I changed negative, negative to positive thoughts. It became a sunburst of uh, success uh, because I believed myself and got the proper help. I used to hate myself because I couldn't do anything no outcomes, I cannot go anywhere, no money in my pocket, my family doesn't like me at all. They kick me into the impatient and outpatient, all those. But what for sure that I'm eager and I'm willing to change myself. I thought that one, then I changed my mind, my mentality from negative to positive way. So that means I try to love myself. Um, my kind of turning point was when I started trusting people again. I had gotten to the point where I didn't trust anyone 
and therefore was lying to everyone and not letting anyone in and not letting anyone know that I was having um, difficulties and therefore just making things worse for myself. And when I finally was able to trust people, you know, mostly my family enough to tell them I needed help um, and created that support network for myself, uh, that's when I really started um, to get hope again. It was like, wow, I think I found my place and maybe I went through this hell to help other people overcome that hell too. Now, what gives me hope is my work environment. I work at an independent living center and everyone there has disabilities. And some people are in wheelchairs. My boss happens to be blind and he's written journal articles and he's very successful. And uh, other peers that are struggling, they come into work and everyone's doing a job despite their disability. Okay, the hope that I have is that um, in such a short time, in community access, access, I moved from being pre-deemed in six, less than six months to being part-time. I, I was lucky to have that, and um, after time went on, I got more used to the idea of working, because at first I was really scared, and I didn't really know if I'd do a good job. I was worried I wasn't gonna do well. I was fear of failure type thing. Um, but after a while, I got into it, and I'm like, yeah, I kind of psyched myself up. And I got psyched up, and, and, and uh, that helped me a lot. The other thing I wanted to mention is humor. Um, that's what really gets my husband and I through the tough times, um, being able to laugh at yourself, laugh at the situation. Uh, it, it really helps. Definitely laughter. That's mm -hmm. was one big one. And just laugh. Just laugh pretty much at what you've done, what you've been through, where you're going, where you forgot to go. Basically. <laughs> I did a lot of volunteering at first for NAMI and MHA because I couldn't get a job. Uh, no one wanted to hire me. And even with the volunteering, I still couldn't get a job. Then it came three months, six months, I couldn't get a job anywhere. And then uh, just the thought came to me one day that. To, to try to get something on my own. And that, what, I end, what I ended up doing is, um, is uh, I went to a home health aid school. Uh, I went, took a two week course and got a certificate. So I ended up, I became a home health aide for about four or five years. So, so that's, what I ended, that's what I ended up doing as a home health aide for about five years. This is a certificate that I'm very proud to have. It took a lot of work for me to get. Um, I had to use a lot of my supports through my therapy, through my group, even some of the students that I went to school with because I was 40 years old going back to school and everybody was younger than I was. And I wasn't embarrassed, I didn't like feel out of place because those young people, they know everything about a computer and they helped me. <laughs> but this is something that I'm very, very proud of. I wish my father was here to see it, but I know you can see it from up there. And it's my office assistant, which was very ironic because of the fact the day that I graduated, the next day I went to VHSN and I was offered the job that I have. A lot of people don't know this, but there's a thing called Medicaid buy-in. And what it is, in my experience is, you usually pay a spend down to keep Medicaid um, and you pay social services. And I used to pay about $200 a month and that was before I started working. The Medicaid buy-in plan, when you start working, when I, start, when I started to work, you, you don't have to pay that spend down anymore. It's covered and you'll be covered with, your with the Medicaid insurance. I didn't lose my insurance when I worked and um, I still have my Medicaid insurance, so I don't lose any health benefits, um, and I don't have to pay that $200 a month anymore. Um, it's very good, it's an incentive for people to get back to work. A lot of people don't know about it. I didn't know about it. 
until I was told about it. And, I, and when I was told about it, I couldn't wait to start working. I, I like what I do. I have a purpose. Every day isn't the weekend where mm -hmm. when I was on disability, so every day was just like a Saturday and Sunday. I had no purpose or anything. And I get up today and I have a purpose and I help people help themselves. When I went to school, it helped me to learn how to manage my time and juggle my parenting and also have something that was my own outside of parenting my children, which was very self-esteem building and I had a sense of purpose. Owning a business with my husband, um, what I like about it is I got to spend time with him um, and the flexibility and the independence um, of being able to do what you want to do, um, being your own boss is great. What I like about my job is that it's really flexible. Um, you know, I get some time off when I can, you know, when I need it. I have a 10 year old son, his name is Antonio, and he's um, a special needs child. So it's very hard for me to get back to work. Eventually, I couldn't afford to pay the bills by staying at home with him. So I found a really good friend who decided to watch him. And it did, it worked out for you know, probably a year, a year and a half. She did really well, she babysat him for me. I was able to get the job. I'm gonna look, I'm looking forward to going back to school and getting a degree so I can get a better job, so that I can make a better life for Antonio, so that, you know, when he's ready, you know, for more things, I can pay for them, and I don't have to depend on where the money's gonna come from. Um, he's my one and only child, and we've been through you know, a lot together. What I like about my work, my job at the cafeteria as a cashier, is a lot of things. But one of one of the perks is you get to eat for free. <laughs> <laughs> so I, when I go on my break, I have my dinner. I mean, it's great, you know, and the food is awesome. It's all organic and it's really good. I'm a front desk receptionist and I enjoy mingling with the tenants, doing what they need for me to do. I'm 53 years old and I haven't worked in 15 years so I've been working for a year and a half now and it's awesome. So when I, w when I work, was working as a service coordinator it was so great people would come to see me and they would come with a problem like a medication issue and, or hospitalization and I could actually say, say, oh yes, I know exactly what you're going through. I, I've been hospitalized. So it, it's so great to, to work in a field where, where, where I can help fellow consumers. That's the biggest satisfaction I get out of working. Yep. What I like about working at BHSN is the fact I was a client there and it's my way of giving, giving back because that's the place that helped me get to the point to where I'm at. Where I'm at. And they helped me go through school and by me going to school and getting the job there, we placed hope in a lot of people. And that's like, it really, it, it touches you to see people say, it's like, how did you get through this? But I made it, it's like, Dan, it's like, I, I'm gonna graduate this year, you know? And it, it's a great feeling. And there's, there's nothing that would change for that. Nothing at all. When I see the improvements in the quality of life for my children, that even the smallest of steps that I've taken have They've just had the greatest impact on the quality of their life. And sometimes my kids come to me and they tell me how proud they are. I'm also in the workforce now in a professional atmosphere for the first time in several years. Um, I did have a small business for four years and I purchased a home. To be in a professional atmosphere, um, the networking aspect bringing me out of isolation and further structuring my day and it further challenging me to manage my time and balance my life with other aspects. Uh, my life is much more full and rewarding and the sense of purpose and pride that I feel being in a professional atmosphere is quite overwhelming at times. Uh, I like it. It seems like one episode stops and another one picks up. But when I crash, I used to think about suicide all the time. But now, I love me. Like I should have loved myself a long time ago, but I love myself more.
when I got the hope back in my life and I knew that I could go back to work, it gave me a chance to get up, a reason to get up, want to get dressed, be happy, buy myself things. I have three letter H's. One is for good health, home, and hope. And I have all three. Today, I have a good job with a good life. I used to live in a car, and through work, I've been able to buy a, car, buy a house. I own my own car. I have insurance for my car. I have two greyhounds, and I wouldn't have that any of that if I didn't work. And uh, that's just, I'm really grateful every day because of work. Here's a coin that means a lot to me. It sort of looks like an AA medallion or an NA medallion, but it's not. It was given to me at the last hospital I was in in 1995. And it, it's not even metal, it's plastic with painted gold on it. And it says the name of the hospital on one side and the serenity prayer on the other side. And since 1995, I must have lived in four or five different places. Um, I've moved, I've gone everywhere, and I never kept this in my pocket, but it would show up. It would show up in a box or it'd show up on the dresser, and I can't get rid of this coin. And every time I see it, it reminds me of where I've been and to be grateful for where I am today. So somehow this coin keeps on staying in my life. It's been 14 years of staying in my life, and it helps me remember where I've been. I'm also going on top of owning the business, um, going back to work for a national company for their call center because um, they're going to pay me tuition reimbursement. So I'm going to go back to school to get my MBA as well. I want to do more. I want to grow. I want a different job. I want to um, get a better job. I want a career. I don't want just a job anymore. I believe that there's a place for everyone in the world. Everything has a place. Everyone has a job to do. There's always thousands of volunteer opportunities out there. I don't feel that you have, that if you don't work that you're a failure. Vol volunteering is just as important as, as working. Get some support to kind of give you a push in the right direction. Make the goal and each day make the plan and then mark on it that you, you can you know what you're doing for the goal and then try to get a job. Uh, my advice to people who want to work is uh, seek out all available. So not you're ashamed or afraid to ask for help. Take risks and uh, don't be afraid to fall down. Um, we all fall down. It's getting back up that's important. I would say suggest that they stay away from the shoulda, couldas, wouldas and stick with yes I can. <laughs> I know you can do it. You know, just keep trying. I know you can do it. Don't say you can't. Just say I can, it's just going to take me time to get there.